everyone, my name is Ashley and welcome to my YouTube channel, That One Dish, where I find recipes either in my handy dandy family recipe book or just from friends or family who've made things that I think are awesome and I teach you guys how to make them at home. Today we are making something super special and that is monkey bread and i know monkey bread weird name where did that come from i don't know maybe i'll have time and editing me will google this and enter somewhere what monkey bread comes from but uh to me it just means delicious and it's super super simple to make and since this week if you're watching this when i posted is week of thanksgiving then this is the perfect <laughs> Um, excuse me, I think, I think someone else has something else more important to do. So we'll just wait for a commercial break. And by commercial break, I just mean Kona drinking his water. We'll be back after these short messages. Are you, are you satiated? Okay, cool. So if you're watching this, the week that I post this, it is Thanksgiving. And I made this for Friendsgiving, and let me tell you guys, this was the showstopper. So if you have a Friendsgiving or a Thanksgiving to go to, I highly recommend bringing this guy, and it will definitely impress all of your friends, or your family, or your in-laws, wherever you are. So stay tuned, and watch while we learn how to make Grandma Leonard's monkey bread. Okay, so the first step is to reheat your oven to 350. Okay, so according to our book, we're gonna need one and a half cans of biscuit dough. I got this from Giant Eagle, which is like the Pennsylvania equivalent to Publix if you're in the South or like a Wegmans or whatever, a grocery store. Um, honestly, we made these this week and we used both of them. So I'm just gonna use both. We're also gonna need three fourths cup of sugar, uh, two teaspoons of cinnamon, which I've added along with the sugar because it's all just gonna go in the same place. Anyways, we're gonna need three fourths cup of butter, which is sliced here. And I pre-sliced mine because it makes it easier for it to melt down. And it also just looks cuter. Okay, so yeah. And then one cup of pecans or pecans, pecan, pecans. And then one fourth cup of brown sugar. And then the extras, you're going to need a little Ziploc, or not little, a big Ziploc bag. I got this from Walmart, self-explanatory. And also a bunt pan, which I feel like people sleep on bunt pans a lot and think it's like a granny thing. It is not, bunt pans are, Delicious, okay? And obviously they're gonna make this bomb dessert. So, bun pan, I got this from my old coworker Daphne. Thanks Daphne if you're watching. And then the last thing you're gonna need is some kind of like cooking spray or something to make sure that it doesn't stick. This is all I had, the olive oil one. It doesn't taste like olive oil, it tastes fine. So you can use whatever you want, butter, Crisco, coconut oil, whatever. I just have olive oil, so that's what we're gonna use. I brought out my cutting board because we are going to have to take these little biscuits and cut them up. I'm very nervous because I don't know how to open these. I mean, I remember being a kid and wait, making, making these, but I would always make my older sister do it. So I know you're supposed to peel this. Okay, and then it's a- That was so much worse than I remember. Okay, so let's do that again. Okay, yeah, if you're a child, please don't do this. Tell your parents to do this. This is terrible. Oh my God, okay. 
You know, I was watching Food Network. They don't even have this in Europe, and probably because they are terrifying. So I'm just gonna pour these monstrosities onto the cutting board somehow. side and then what you have to do is just cut them into fours okay so i'm gonna cut these all into fours and i'll see you guys in like two seconds now everything is cut into little fours and i'm just gonna move everything out of my way so that i have more room to work and I'll show you, this extra step was not in the book, but it kind of makes a difference aesthetically and it's just more fun and I'll explain why. So right now they're like little triangle type pieces, which is fine. You can totally just drop them into your cinnamon sugar like this, but I like to roll them into like little balls because they just are easier to eat like that and serve and it just makes the whole blunt pan look a little bit nice and put together and more uniform i guess so i'm gonna roll these guys into little balls they don't have to be perfect and i'll show you what we do once they're all rolled up now we're gonna grab our ziploc bag and we're gonna put the cinnamon and sugar in here and just mix it on up so that's why i put them both together in here because they're just gonna be together anyways Make sure this is closed before you shake it. Not speaking from personal experience or anything. Oh, ooh. <laughs> that's what I mean. Okay. Ooh, that's not closing. Okay. Now you're just gonna like shake it. You can't really see like clumps of sugar or cinnamon. Okay, that looks good to me. So now we're gonna open her up and we're gonna drop in our little monkey balls <laughs> and coat them in the sugar. So I just do a few at a time. Close it and then just like toss them around. There's not that many in there, so you don't really have to do it for that long. If you ever made snickerdoodle cookies, it's kind of like the same situation. They kind of look like snickerdoodle cookies, actually. Okay, and then I'm just gonna keep dropping in my balls <laughs> and mixing them up. so the little monkey balls don't get stuck. Now that she's all ready to go, we're just gonna drop in our little balls. And just, there's no really rhyme or reason to this. You're just gonna make sure that they're not all too clumped up together. are in. So the next thing we're going to do is head over to the stove 
We're gonna get our butter and our brown sugar and our pecans up to the stove, melt them together to make something super delicious to cover these guys up. Let's go over to the stove. Now we're gonna set the stove to like medium high. I did like three on mine. And we're gonna take our butter. And remember how I said that I sliced them for a particular reason? Well, this is why, because they will melt quicker in little pieces as opposed to being in giant blocks. So we're just gonna put that all in there. We're gonna add our brown sugar and then turn up the heat even more because you want this to boil. Now that it's boiling, we're gonna turn off the heat and we're gonna stir it constantly because we don't want this to burn. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes and now it's a little bit thicker and more syrup-like. So the last step is to add in our pecans. The oven is preheated to 350 degrees and we're going to put this in for about 45 minutes. And she's done and I just realized I need another <laughs> oven mitt because this is hot but let's see if I can do it with my hands. So now let's let this cool off for a few minutes because it is hot. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for. It's been out of the oven for a few minutes, so it's not as hot. What I did was I took the bunt pan and then I took a just circular plate, put it on top and then a linen, dish towel, whatever you have on hand, because this is still a little hot and we're going to flip it. I'm so nervous, oh my gosh. Okay, we're gonna flip it. Say a little prayer. And then when I remove it, it should be... Perfect, oh my gosh, it looks amazing. So good, and I think as if on cue, I hear Kona coming to judge what we made. Here's Kona. Okay, Kona, he's going to, he's gonna judge this and make sure that it's up to Grandma Leonard's standards. And in the meantime, let me know if you guys make this, if you have any questions, if not, we will see you on the next episode of That One Dish. Bye.